Hi, this is Deborah Dashinger from the Dare to Dream radio show, and it's amazing. I'm back. I was on vacation, and I am still so mellow, so enjoy this space with me, would you please? How can you get in touch with us? Well, as you know, we are a 92.5 KYHY. This is the Dare to Dream radio show. I am Deborah Dashinger, and I'm so psyched. If I have to come back anywhere from vacation, and I would love to be on a permanent vacation, this would be it, because this is very vacation-like. Where else do you get to interview amazing people who are doing what they love in their life and have a great connection, sometimes make friends, and learn, you know, just synergize, do good things for the planet, for yourself and for others. So, joy spot right here. How can you connect with us? Well, you know, you can go to my website, and all the radio shows are there, the present, archived and that's http deborah dashinger.com deborah d-e-b-o-r-a-h and dashinger d-a-c-h-i-n-g-e-r.com we're podcast on itunes we're on upublish.com where we won an award for the intriguing creator we are on facebook please join us on our fan page there we love hearing from you we've made some amazing connections there as well and our fan page on Facebook is called Dare to Dream Radio and TV. Look us up. Join us. Also, YouTube. That's where all these videos go out to. So, YouTube, find me at Deb on the Radio. And that's also my Twitter account, Deb on the Radio. Love to see you there. And I've got a blog spot, Deb on the Radio at blogspot.com. That's right. So, the, um, the thing we're going to be talking about is... I guess things that work for us, things that are helping us to get ahead toward our dream and our goals come true. I want to give a little shout out first just to say that Randall Libero wrote out, he is the creator of the Seventh Wave Network TV and radio. He's a fan and a listener and we love having him as our friend, colleague, and as uh, someone who tunes in. And uh, Randall wrote in, multitasking here in the station. Randall wrote in, Hey Deb, I took your suggestion from a recent show and I changed my pa- my Facebook password to a prosperity anagram. I like it. It's working for me. So if you want to know what he's talking about, and I highly recommend you do, listen to the interview that I did recently with Ron Bard, B-A-R-D. Go to my website. Just listen to it. The whole opening's about that. And it's very exciting. Ron got excited too, and he's doing that in his life. I was reading a book recently by Melody Beattie. It's actually an older book, and in it she's explaining that at one point in her life she really was passionate about taking skydiving lessons. And for her first jump, she was mortified. Honey, so would I be. So she was really scared, but she was so passionate about doing this and she felt hesitant to jump out of the plane. And her friend said to her, do you believe in God? And she said, yes. And he said, then jump. I thought that is profound. That's really profound because that's what life is all about. We come up to the precipice, we're passionate about something, and here we are right at the edge, something we really want to create, something we really want to do, and something tells us we can't, well, you really can't go all the way with that. You really can't let lo- let loose and move into it because something terrible is going to happen. But it's so true. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the universe? Do you believe in your path? Do you believe that there's a reason why you're here? Do you believe in your soul? Do you believe your soul brought you here for a reason? Then jump. Jump. <sighs> Laura Bergman Fortang wrote, if everything were linear and predictable, we'd come to a halt. There would be no creativity or evolution or growth. To live is to weave constantly between the known and the unknown. I really got to see, my vacation was spent in the Pacific Northwest. There's so much of the United States I've never seen. And so we flew into Oregon, Portland, and spent time there, and then went all around. We rented a car, went all around Oregon, and we drove up into Washington, went all around Washington, and a little bit in Canada, and then back again. Wow, beautiful country. I mean, really beautiful country, and some really nice people. Oh, uh, so great to be around, and there's so much acceptance up there on so many levels. So, and good food, yum yum. Yeah, so it's true, you know, because if you take a vacation and you want everything planned and known, uh, it makes you a little bit crazy and a lot unrelaxed. So I got to see that in myself, the idea of completely letting go and letting flow into exactly what was. We were on a road trip, ostensibly, so a road trip means adventure, it means spontaneous excitement, it means allowing stuff to happen. 
being present for whatever it is, making decisions in the moment. So I had to go there. Laura also wrote, it's understandable that we want order, predictability, and answers to all of our questions. If we have these things, we feel more comfortable, yet tremendous fullness, aliveness, and a different kind of comfort come when we learn to tolerate the randomness of life. Tolerate the randomness of life. Nothing is neat and tidy. Nothing has been and ever will be. So stop expecting it because you'll make yourself crazy and you'll live your life through resistance. Just right now, in this moment, as I'm saying these words, let it go. Whatever's going on for you, let it go. Be right here. Notice all you do have. There is such gold in that. Be in the gold. So can we create our own luck? Well, psychic intuitive Anne Jersh did 10 years of scientific research and she really found a difference between lucky and unlucky people. And what she found is that they, they demonstrated certain habits that seemed to continue to make them lucky. So she gave some experiments to the unlucky people and said, start doing this. In fact, she gave the experiment to the unlucky and the lucky people coming into the experiment. And what happened was the unlucky people became lucky and the lucky people became luckier. So what can you do about your own thoughts and behaviors uh, to create more good in your life and encounter more of what you want? Anne suggests we do the following. And here are four tips for becoming more lucky. One, listen to your gut instinct. It is normally right. Amen, sister. Let me tell you that today, um, I have, I would say, 98% of my experience on this radio is magnificent. However, I had somebody who's um, connected with the radio show, and this person all along has been, there's been a lot of strange energy, and I'm very sensitive to that, so I've been feeling something's going on in their side, and we had a phone call today where she called me and said a couple of things, and I knew it wasn't in my space, but you know, I went inside and asked, should I call her back or shouldn't I? Now, I can let this go and know that she'll either work it out or not, and it really has nothing to do with me. But I thought, no, you need to, not for any other reason, but for me to have comfort in my future connection with her. Clear it up now. And I did. I listened to my gut. I made the phone call, connected with this person, and said, this is what I'm experiencing. How's it going for you? And it was amazing when she said, oh, I've been having a really hard day and things haven't been working out. And then when this happened, I thought, I've got another thing. And, da, da, da. and before you knew it, within five minutes, she said, it was all me. And I, I really apologize. And, you know, it was good because she, th she said, thank you for your kindness in making this call. And, you know, I thanked her for her kindness and taking responsibility because I do that a lot. So I really appreciated someone else doing it my gut instinct was right. And so now we're moving forward and there's nothing there. There's no weird energy. It's done. Two, be open to new experiences and breaking your normal routine. God, there's something so exhilarating about a usual pattern and suddenly, I don't even care if you're just, you take a walk every day and suddenly you go, today I'm going to take a whole new path I've never been on before. And that's your experience. Or you meet with new people. I went to a mixer last night. Um, I'm, I belong to an organization that has to do with radio and television and I go alone to these things. You know, it's a really big swanky place in Los Angeles. I go completely alone and I meet people. And there was a certain point where I was looking around the room, again, I'm alone, <laughs> and I said to myself, go meet five people. I want you to connect with five people. So that's what I did, five people. And uh, two of them were very significant, so it worked out great for me. Three, spend a few minutes each day remembering things that went well. What went well? What went well? I don't care if you snap this off for a minute and breathe and just reflect and move on. Changes your whole outlook. Four, visualize yourself being lucky before an important meeting or telephone call. Luck is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I've been doing this. I even experiment. Here's some. Here's a Debbieism. This is what I do. Sometimes I have this feeling like right before I go to sleep, like, am I going to be able to fall asleep? I don't know why I get scared about that, probably because if you've never fallen asleep, you know how crappy that feels. But I do fall asleep. Actually, I sleep very well. So what one thing I do as I'm falling asleep, or as I close my eyes to go to bed, is I start picturing my life in every respect how I want it, how I want to feel, taste, experience, smell, colors, everything. I see myself in that space of my life. And then 
some point I obviously fall asleep because I wake up in the morning, but it's time well spent. You know, by thinking that they're more lucky, people expect it to be luckier, so why don't you too? Dale Carnegie believed and wrote about that we have to think positive. He suggested we see the good in people because then suddenly everyone will be on your side and will help you to achieve your goals. So, what's your dream? What's your goal? What's, how can you implement these things? How can you listen to your gut instincts about your dreams? How can you be open to new experience and routines? What are you doing? You know, if you're in a certain place, you need to break, break free. When we do new things, new things can come to us. So do that with your dream and your goal. Spend a few minutes remembering anything that went well with your dream, even if it was that you stayed positive. Or let's say that phone call you got, or that email you got, or somebody who signed on, or a connection you made, or somebody said, you know, you ought to, whatever it is, was the gig you did, experience that and have appreciation for that. And visualize yourself being lucky before anything important that you experience or a call you need to make. I love that because sometimes we need to call people who are we need something from. It could be a job, it could be a connection, a gig. When that happens, spend that moment before you pick up the phone and energetically connect, but connect with them in this space and just see it being a fortunate, full of fortune phone call. And then go ahead and make that call. This is Deborah Dashinger. Oh, it is a pleasure to connect with you dreamers. Remember, don't just dare to dream. Make those dreams a reality. We depend on you. And we love hearing from you.